Welcome everyone to Scrapbook Live. I am Megan Jacks. Today is Wednesday, October 18th, and I have a layout for you. It's from the Creative Memories blog. It was originally published in January, 2023, features the Tropic Time collection, but of course we're gonna do it with something else. This is actually a really lovely layout that, um, I mean, all of the blog ones, when you really get down to them, are quite versatile if you want to mix and match your paper. So don't let what the blog sample shows you um, discourage you um, from trying out some of them, especially if you want to try a new technique or just play with your tools, play with your pretty paper. Um, the blog projects are really good for that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my overhead camera and we will get started. Okay. So today's layout, actually, which is really great, um, Creative Memories did me a world of service because they put out the new sketchbook, right? The new lovely sketchbook that was part of the birthday um, promotion that was earlier in um, October, earlier this month. And they have 101 sketches in here. And most of them, I would say probably 98% of them, I think there was two or three that are not on the blog, but most of them are blog projects, meaning that um, you can um, go and search the blog to find the original instructions. The great thing about them though, is this version of the sketchbook, they do give us the measurements. Yay for measurements. So what I did is I actually just started flipping through the, the sketchbook to decide what are we going to do for scrapbook life, right? Because I know many of us are going to start working through the sketchbook. Creative Memories has challenged us to see if we can do all 101 sketches in this booklet. So I'm going to try to help you out, right? We'll do some of them as scrapbook live. Some of them we have already done as part of scrapbook live. Um, this one, you guys may remember, this was from the, um, this is use a snowbound. I used, um, I did some photos of my youngest or my middle child. And I think we did with some, uh, pinks. I think it was one of the scrapbook lives. I know that we've done some other ones in here. Um, so lots of ideas, things to be able to look through. It's a great, um, definitely a great, um, uh, uh, tool to have. And of course I've lost my page. It was, it was page 69 of the sketchbook is the one we are doing today. Of course, if you need the handout, I've got the handout on my website um, at meganjacks.com. You'll be able to go to scrapbook live and you'll be able to print out a PDF. I have simply copied the um, directions out of the original blog project. If you want to go to the blog project on the creative memories blog, click on that UR, or, um, QR code or use your phone to go there. If you want to share your layout later, use the hashtag listed at the bottom and you will be able to sh um, share that in my um, Scrapbooking with Megan Facebook group if you want to share your version. Okay, so this layout theoretically should go together pretty quickly. Um, the big thing that we're going to do here is we are going to use the decorative trimmer, one of my favorite tools. And uh, I will talk about using the decorative trimmer. If you don't have the decorative trimmer, you certainly can um, make adjustments. But the big detail here is they have a, they have used the decorative trimmer to give yourself a decorative edge um, on this portion of the layout. You could easily come in with a border punch and just punch that edge. You could use a border maker cartridge. You could use a tearing tool. You could just do a straight edge and then just come in with a, another, you know, half inch band or three quarter inch band of a different color along a straight edge. So if you don't have the decorative trimmer, one, I want you to go to creativememories.com, shop with your favorite advisor and put it in your shopping cart for the next purchase. Um, I'm kind of joking with that, but I'm kind of not. It's a great tool. Um, but if you don't have it, there's lots of ways to work around it. But if you do have it, I would encourage you to go ahead, grab it and have it available. We need to have, um, you can see here, we have three different patterns of paper. We have uh, kind of a tonal coral color. They've got a kind of a statement print with that floral. And then they use the accent color of the teal, um, or they call it more that island water. It's kind of that, uh, uh, uh greenish blue color in here. So my base color where they use the coral color, I'm going to be using the chicken paper from the, on the farm. I just thought the chicken paper is great because I have photos of Cody at a little 
petting zoo. Uh, it's not really a petting zoo. It's a, um, it's a produce stand not far from my house and they have animals that you can pet or look at through the barnyard. I mean, you really shouldn't stick your fingers in there. They will nip at them, but they do have the sheep, chickens and goats and so forth. And then of course, um, there is a little, um, they have a little pond. Well, actually the pond is at the, uh, the nursery across the street, but we won't, we're going to pretend it was all together at the, uh, at the produce stand. So here's my photos where they use a mat down here. I'm using another photo because I had more than just four little photos I wanted to use. I had a fifth one that I actually couldn't cut down small enough. So it worked perfect. So I'm going to have my chickens as my background. I am going to use the chicken wire paper. This is actually from, uh, I think this is still from on the farm. And then I am going to also for an accent where they use the teal, I'm going to use the bar or the wood paper, the opposite side to it has the cow print or the animal. I think that's a cow print could be a horse animal print. I am not a hundred percent sure. I am almost positive. I'm going to use the brown, the tonal brown of the wood for this, where we see the wave accent, but my mats might actually use the cow print, the animal hide. So I'll be able to mix and match because those pieces will be cut from this. So I can flip pieces over to see which one I prefer. All right. So in our instructions, they want us... <laughs> The instructions, they actually had you using a full sheet of the pretty flower paper, which for me would be the chicken wire, and then cutting an eight inch piece of the coral paper with the decorative trimmer, and then laying it over. That's a lot of paper that we're covering up. That really gets to be probably more paper to cover up than we need to, because we'd be covering up a whole lot of this chicken wire, and I don't think we need to do that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to grab my pencil. They want us to cut an eight inch piece of the coral paper. So eight inches over here, this would be eight inches. From corner to the edge here should be eight inches. So theoretically, this should be eh, roughly four inches or so. So instead of cutting my and covering up all of my chicken wire with my chicken paper, I'm going to go ahead and just cut a four inch piece of my chicken wire. I may cut it a little bit bigger than four inches. I don't think it matters that much. I think we have a little bit of flexibility in here. So, um, what I'll do is, yeah, I'll probably cut it closer to, because my, yeah, I'll cut it a little bit short. I'll cut it a little bit bigger. If I need to, I can always cut some off the straight edge. So the big thing with cutting with the decorative trimmer is one of the things we want to look at is trying to figure out which direction they use. First of all, they talk about using the swell edge. I always refer to this edge here as the swell. This edge here where the, the wave is more frequent, it's a higher frequency of a wave. I refer to this as the wave edge. So in this layout where they say swell, I actually would, I have it as them using the wave. This should be the wave edge. This is the wave. This is the swell. And you can see we have a higher frequency, so we're using the wave edge. And that could just be a little bit of a difference in um, terminology that they're using when they're writing the blogs. But for my, when I'm talking about this, you're going to hear me referring to the wave edge, and that is this edge that we're using today. So when I look at this, I can tell that my wave is pointing downward and see how my wave is pointing downward here. So I'm gonna be cutting and using this side of my paper. So if I put my chicken paper in here, I'm gonna put my chicken paper in from the right, going towards the left, and I'm gonna line this up. I just wanna cut off 
the very edge of my paper. I am going to center my paper. Remember, our trimmer bed on our decorative trimmer is 12 and a half inches long. So I need to come down one quarter inch from the top. All of these squares are quarter inch. You can see I've actually come in here and I've marked with a Sharpie. I actually made it with a darker Sharpie this time. You can see I've come down a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. That just reminds me when I want to center my paper that I can do so. In my opinion, this is going to be a layout where you will want to center your paper because we're going to bring in that extra, um, we're going to bring in an, that extra element of that kind of that stripe, the, the wavy stripe. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. and then cut. And all I'm doing is cutting off that edge. I'm cutting off the edge to establish my wave. So you can see here, this is gonna come over just like such to make my layout. Now here, this edge is supposed to be eight inches. So I can bring here, bring out my ruler, they originally wanted this piece to be eight inches. So when I trim this, I'm actually gonna trim at my, my piece of paper here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut. I could just use my pencil if I wanted to and come in here and measure, there's my 12 inches. Or I just need to know that I'm actually coming from the, uh, the trough of my wave on this side here, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna measure four inches over from this dip. Grab my trimmer. I'm gonna take this dip, pull it all the way over to four inches and trim. And that's gonna go like such. All right. Now, if I really wanted to, I could come in and I could cut off a chunk of this uh, chicken paper. You can see I've got quite the overlap. I could cut it off and do a little bit of paper weld. I'm not going to worry about that. I think if I was doing it on my own, I, you know, I wasn't doing it on film for all of you guys, I probably would do that and just cut off that excess. But since I'm doing this as kind of a, um, you know, we're, we're a teaching and we're trying to keep it not too complicated, I'll just leave it as is. Next up, I need to cut that band that's gonna come along here where they show that core, the teal band here. I need to go ahead and trim one of those and I'm gonna cut it out of this piece of paper, this tonal brown paper. Again, I'm cutting it with the wave. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna feed my paper in from the left towards the right. I'm going to establish that wave edge. And again, I am centering my paper top to bottom. I centered it over here. If I want my swell, my waves to line up, if I centered this one, I need to center this one. Otherwise, those waves will not line up. So when you, when you think about it, and if you center your paper in your decorative trimmer, just you probably wanna keep centering it throughout the rest of that project, unless you are deliberately doing something that involves not being centered. All right, so this piece, this edge, I've established that wave, and this piece is supposed to be half an inch wide. So half an inch is two squares. So I'm going to come up and basically I'm going to bring, I can tell here, the bottom of my trough right there is at a square. I'm going to come up two squares. I'm going to bring the, this right up to that line there. You could also come over here and my edge of my paper is going to come all the way out here to this square. So there's one, two squares. Truthfully, it doesn't matter. Make it as wide as you want. 
the directions just tell us to make it a half an inch, but you can make it three quarters of an inch. The biggest thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure whatever you mark it at the top, you also mark it at the bottom. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit wider. I'm just trying to make sure that I make it even. I wanna make sure that both pieces, both the top and the bottom, are at the same spot. There we go. And that should fit on just like such, All right? So we can see how that's starting to come together. Using this same piece of paper, I need to make the mats. It tells me in um, step four, they actually, in the blog, they use a larger variety mat, which is the four and a half by six and a half. I am not going to use a variety mat. I'm going to make that four and a half by six and a half inch cut from this piece of paper. I also need a six and a half by six and a half inch square. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this at six and a half inches wide. Six and a half. I'll cut that six and a half inch square. And then I'll cut this remaining piece to four and a half inches wide. And I'll have a little scrap. This is gonna come over like such. And then the this piece here sits at the top. Now remember I said I might actually use the animal print side instead. Cause I think the animal print is, is cute. I think I like that it has a little bit of that lighter tone to it, but at the same time, maybe it's a bit much. And it might just be easier to just use the darker color because it's not quite as distracting. I've got a lot going on in the photos. I've got a lot of textures. So it actually, I think I will just go ahead and use the dark. The dark green. So now this, the other thing I need to think here is it looks to me like this piece over here is a little too wide. The reason I'm saying that is I still need to be able to fit in a vertical or a, um, a title over on this side. You can see that they use some title stickers and a border sticker in there to put that title on the side. I do like that. I love it when the titles are turned on their edge like that. So I want to make sure I have space for that. This is not enough space. I have already used my um, title topia and I've got my um, title all ready to go. And so I need to be able to fit that title in here and it's not gonna fit as it currently is. In case you're wondering, I am just putting my, I'm using my silicone mat to hold my title in place in a safe way so that I can stick it down later. So I think what I need to do is I am gonna bring my I'm actually gonna, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and set these pieces in place and then I'll position this later. So let me use my adhesive. The one thing that's nice about this four by six at the bottom, if I had even more pictures that I wanted to include, I could easily peekaboo pocket that. It's a full, just a four by six. I didn't trim it down at all. These pieces up here, I did cut. These photos are all cut to three by three. I was feeling lucky that I was able to get them down to three by three. I definitely struggle sometimes to be able to get my photos cropped that small unless I deliberately print them to cut that small.
And these ones I already had printed. I had, these were part of just a print everything from that year. I just hadn't done anything with them and it worked out really well. I think last week when I talked about being able to use the on the farm collection for more like a petting zoo situation, um, that I instantly thought of these photos and I said, oh, that'll be perfect. So I think what I'm going to do before I go too much further is I'm actually just going to go ahead and establish this border, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put this title down. I am going to mix this title in with the fence stickers from, uh, on the farm. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just remove these pieces for right now, grab my cutting mat. I did take the time. I'm, I'm actually going to rotate my paper. So my chickens are now going to the side. Here's the top. I'm putting my title along this edge. And since I really need this title to go into a very specific spot, that's why I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Now we can see here, one thing they did on the sample is they put that title a little bit more. You can see it's a little bit more towards the bottom giving them a little bit of room at the top to add that embellishment. So I'm gonna do that. And I, when I did this, I went ahead and centered it all on my um, title topia. How I did that was I wrote out the words, wrote out the word. I initially was gonna say farmyard friends, then I changed it to barnyard, but it's still the same. It's the same number of letters. Established my letters, put in a space, right? So I had a total of 16 characters. Farmyard has eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I established the center is right after the D, the eight letters of farm yard or barn yard. So when I put this on my title topia, you can see that dark black line is the center. I put my D of barn yard right at the center. Now we could get really specific and talk about how I isn't the same width as all these other characters, but the reality is, since I'm going to be moving it around, having it centered on the title topia doesn't matter as much. The other thing I want to point out, if you're using the title topia, if you have one and you're using it with your stickers, the multi-purpose tool is going to be your best friend. Let me just quickly show you how this would work. Grab my letters. I'm going to come in here. I use the sans serif stickers. And all I do is I come in here and I just grab underneath the top edge, this is the J, with my multi-purpose tool, pick it up, and then set it on my title topia. The multi-purpose tool, if you're using Creative Memories letter stickers, is your best friend. If you need to then, when you're on the page, you can scoop under and lift the sticker back up if you need to. But I've got them all situated here. Now what I'm going to do is figure out where I want these to go. I am kind of lucky because I do have, um, the chicken helps me. The other part that the chicken pattern is straight across. So it's kind of helping me keep know where a straight line is. I could grab my, um, my T square ruler if I want, but I'm not going to use my T square. I don't think I am going to grab since I've got this all lined on the title topia, I think what I'll do is I'm actually going to put my barnyards, my fence stickers on here too, to at least get myself positioned. What that's going to help me do is just make sure that I'm giving myself that space, not just for my letters, but also for my fence. I'm going to start my letters two inches from the bottom, making sure I'm lined up here at the top on my cutting mat. I want to make sure I'm straight. So I can see here I'm two inches from the left and I'm going to put that down got it in place and I'm just going to go ahead and stick. I'm going to pull my fence sticker up. I'm going to set it on my silicone mat for now, just to get it out of the way. And now here, what I do 
Everybody has a little bit of a different technique when they use the title topia. My technique so far has been to do this and then to just kind of lift it up and pull it out carefully. You want to make sure that your stickers are stuck to the, at the top and then just pull away from the bottom. There's my barnyard friends. Come in here with my stickers, my fence sticker. Stickers can lift your ink off the paper, so you do want to be careful. Taking it right to the edge of my paper, I'm snipping off the extra. And now I'm going to come over to the other side and put on these last couple bits. Of course, I want my fence to be straight. Looks good. And I'll snip that off. So now I have my title. All right, so here's my title. Now everything else can be established that I have, I have my title on here. I can come back and I can put my these pieces on, go ahead and I'm going to do that. Just making sure my spacing at the top and the bottom is even. Now I've got this space over here that I need to be able to put, come in and put this piece in. So I can already see that if I were to come and be flush along this edge, I would be covering that up. So I don't want that. I'm gonna give myself that space, that breathing room. We're gonna see a few chickens pop through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put this on in a space that I think is good. And then I'll trim off that extra space. The other side is this kind of a lovely, has a little textile print to it. I was like, hmm, I like that. But I like the chickens, the chicken wire because it goes with my chickens. One thing I want to do is I'm going to clean up, just rub my hand along that edge. The nature of the, well, actually, I think that I need to get new blades on my decorative trimmer. That piece is in there, and you can see right here, I was about a half inch too big. Yeah, a little over half an inch too big, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that off with my trimmer. And then I'm going to come in here and I could use, I could use the animal print here if I wanted to. I don't necessarily have to use the, um, the brown, but I do think I like the brown. Um, I agree the animal print is, is fun. Um, but I think I just like the brown. It's a, it starts to be a little bit distracting, but let's take a peek at some of my uh, additional things here. So these are out of the wide open places map pack. And I thought they were cute. 
I do want to have a little bit of space for journaling. The challenge is, is I really like, I really like these stacked animals. They're so cute, right? Um, so I'm not sure where I could put those. I could fussy cut all the way around them, which is going to be really intense. Um, the other option is just to come in here as such and just kind of layer them almost like they're playing cards. That's cute with the, the, um, the horseshoes, even though there was no, you know, horses there. And then I could, because I'm using a lighter paper, I could still just do some journaling down here. All right. Um, if I don't, I don't have to use a journaling block. I do have, um, I could do a journaling block still here. And then I don't know. I really, I just really, I won't ever use this unless I use it as part of this. And that's kind of where I'm feeling about this, right? This is just the perfect layout if I'm going to use it. So maybe I will just do something like that. And I'll do a little bit of journaling down here on the, the lighter chicken wire paper. Um, I really liked, I thought about using, I have this oval, um, out of the, once again, out of the wide open places that it could do some journaling on there, but it kind of, I like the denim with it, but it kind of contrasts. Um, again, I just don't know what to do with these silly. Well, I guess I could do something like this. Let me, I was going to, I cut the oval. As you can see, I cut the oval out of this using the custom cutting system. This piece right here, I could still come in. I love, love, love this stripe, but I don't have enough to completely back this piece here, but I could do a tilted card with it. Cut it in half, cut it in half at three and a quarter inches. I'm gonna round the corners. We're gonna to totally just fake it. And if I tilt these just right, nobody will know that it doesn't have a full piece behind it. Or I could still use this darker piece, which might just be fine with the horseshoes. And then come in here and journal on there as such. All right. So um, I did see a question about the title Topias. I do have some in my personal inventory. I don't have them on my website yet, but I will be getting them up there. Um, so I will have those available. You can always go to makeitjacks.com and look on my inventory. Just don't do it right now because I don't have them on there. I just need to get them loaded up there. So I think this is about what we're going to do. I can come back still with some stickers out of either wide open places. I need to see what the sticker options are, um, that I have left. I'm trying to think those are a little more ranch style as compared to on the farm, which had some, I think had some few more barnyard animals in there. I just need to sort through my stuff a little bit more and find those stickers. Cause of course they're hiding from me. So I will take a peek and figure out some additional little things to add to this and get that all finished up. But you can see here in general, that's what the layout's going to look like. And I don't know if I have, I may have had a hiccup because I'm not showing Okay. I don't know if I had a big stop there with my video. Hopefully it didn't impact you guys. Um, I had a prompt come through on my phone that froze up my video. So apparently 
I'm going to have to look into that. But yes, I am sorry, guys. There was a pause. I, there was some issue with my video. I do not know if it actually impacted the audio as well, or if it was just the video, but, and I don't know how long it went for. I'm so sorry. I really don't know. So you probably heard me fiddling around, but didn't actually see it. Um, but this is what I came up with. All right. Um, I do, I am going to try to track down my, uh, on the farm stickers. I'm not sure they didn't end up back in my project folder. So I've got to have them someplace else and I will see, um, uh, there. So good. I'm glad you guys that it wasn't very long. Um, and it, it got it all <laughs> figured out. So, um, this is, this is what we're going with. I will have uh, the, it finished up though and share it later um, with those additional, probably the little stickers on there. It was quite a bit and it was frozen. So maybe it did. I don't know. Some of the details there um, that it had an issue. Gotta love technology, right? So I had some prompt from YouTube. They're like, somebody's trying to change your settings. I'm like, no, I'm not. So um, we'll deny that permission and I'm going to have to investigate. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I ha will have this posted later this afternoon. The video will make it onto YouTube, pause and all. And then next, let's see the next, next week scrapbook live will not be on Wednesday because I am taking my middle child on a college visit and Wednesday for them was the best day that they could do it. Cause you know, when you got a senior, they got AP classes, they got other things. You don't want to miss school on days. You don't really shouldn't. And Wednesday next week is, um, a really super short day for them. So it was super easy just to miss school. Cause each class is only like 20 minutes long. They never do anything. Half the kids don't even show up. So we're going to miss Wednesday of school to go on a college visit. That means that I will need to move scrapbook life. I think it's going to be on Tuesday. Um, I think, and, um, so I will know for sure though, it might be Thursday. We'll see. I'll get it figured out and be able to share with you guys. Um, it'll be just put on Facebook as an event. So you guys will be able to, um, put that on your, um, Facebook calendars to help you remind you. And I'll of course have reminders next week of what date is going to be for sure. And it's borders. So we'll do some borders next week. I don't know what, which ones yet, but we'll do some borders. And, um, I did see a question though, from Deborah asking about what I would do for a double page. That is a really, really great question. And I'm going to quickly show back to my, um, my tabletop here and I will show you. So what I would consider doing here is actually either just extending it with the, um, the second page coming over with a second sheet of your paper. Um, you could extend it out. If you didn't want to use um, this paper, I would probably extend this paper here at least some. You could use another full 12 inch sheet. Um, let me show you what that would look like. Let me grab, I think I have the other piece of chicken wire paper. Here it is. So you could see we could just extend this all the way out to get that 24 inch piece. The other thing we could do is we could have come in here and I could have cut off with my decorative trimmer, the chicken, and I could pull that section over here to the second piece and basically come over with this chicken piece over to this side with that wave. And I could have um, mimicked both sides, just giving myself that thinner red chicken paper over here with the brown wave as well. But all in all, I probably would just go with this, maybe bring some of the red chicken mat over to this side um, and, do, and do that. So you're pulling that red over to this side in the mats, mix in the brown and the red mats would be one way to consider doing that. All right. So hopefully that helps give some ideas there. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. Like I said, next week, I will have the date. Uh, I'll have that posted probably later this week or this weekend. And um, I think that's it. Secret box is still available. There's still, I think quite a few available. I ha did have some people asking me, I should be getting my secret box today. I ordered two day shipping for those of you who did not order two day shipping. Yours will be coming. Um, creative memories had a lot of orders come in. They also had a lot of, um, uh, 
yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. I think I'm trying to think of what other orders of mine have shipped. We did have that little bit of a special last week, the pop-up promo. So that always brings in a few more orders. So they get through all those orders first, and then they get to the regular orders. If you order two day air, sometimes those orders get processed a little bit faster um, within the um, warehouse. So that's why I'm getting mine so quickly. Now, I never wait <laughs> to open. So if you really have to know, um, later this afternoon, definitely tomorrow, I will have um, some photos and you can certainly send me a message. I do ask, you have got to be on the down low with, right? Remember, other people want to be surprised. So it's definitely very private. If you do get the box, you do open it. Do not share your photos. Do not spill the contents. Don't even talk about what's in it. You can certainly say how much you love it, right? Uh, but don't um, spoil the surprise for the people who really want to be surprised. All right. If you guys ever have questions, send me a message. Always happy to help as much as possible. I will see you all next week. Have an enjoyable rest of the week and a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in.